Welcome to another installment of Mr. Kung Has Problems. This is Grade 4, Module 2, Lesson 4, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about place value and metric unit conversions, building on the lessons that we've had recently. So let's take a look at a couple of problems that you might be working on tonight. I'm going to do one of the problems in number 2. I'm going to look at problem 2E. We're looking at, two, at one number here, which is... 12,350, and we're asked to express that as 12 somethings and 350 ones. Well, if we look at that, if we took the 350 ones out of here and looked just at the 12, what are those 12? Are those 1,200 or 12,000 or 12 million? We could look at our place value chart to figure that out. The 2 is in the thousands place, and we have 10 more of the thousands, that is to say 1 in the 10 thousands place. So we would describe that as the same as 12,000. There we go. 12,000s and 351s. If someone said we, they gave us $12,000 and then 350 single dollar bills, we would in fact have 12,350. That's how we know that our, that our answer is correct. Let's take a look at 3B as another example. Here we have a little bit of a process in reverse. We're going to look for the total number of milliliters here, but we're being told the two parts, 125 liters and 315, three, I'm sorry, 312 milliliters. Well, we remember something, which is that uh, one liter, that is one liter, equals how many milliliters? How many milliliters? Well, milla, 1,000 milliliters. And so we're able to write this number as 125,312 milliliters. That is, we look at the 312 milliliters, those end up here, and we look at 125 liters and say that's the same as 125,000 milliliters, giving us our answer. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look. Let's go ahead and take a look at the number line problem that's in number seven. One of the issues here is that we have one of these number lines that isn't filled in very well. So we can see that the number line starts at zero grams, and we can see that there are one, two, three, four hops on the number line till we get to 4,000 grams. And so we can deduce the value of everything in between here. We can deduce that we're hopping by 1,000 grams. So let's say, let's call that 1,000 grams. Sorry for my stylus penmanship. 2,000 grams and 3,000 grams. And then furthermore, we can look at some of these numbers like 3,000 grams, sorry, 3,079 grams, 3,579 grams, and 579 grams. Those are already in grams, and those should be somewhat easier for us to put into our spot. So let's take a look. Uh, 579 grams, well that's less than 1,000 grams, right? And it's more than zero grams, so I think that's going to go somewhere in here. 579 grams. Let's see, the next number over from the right hand side is 3,579 grams. Well that's more than 3,000 grams, but it's not as many as 4,000 grams, so I think that's going to be somewhere in here. 3,579 grams. And finally, we can look at another number like this one, 3,079 grams. Well that is just barely over 3,000 grams, but nowhere near 4,000 grams. So I'm going to draw a little line out, and that's 3,079 grams. So those are the easy ones. That takes care of this one, this one, and this one. And now we have these other ones where we kind of need to do our conversion. Remembering that one kilogram is 1,000 grams, this is actually the same as 1,379 grams. So that's more than 1,000, but less than 2,000. So I'm going to say that's about 1,379 grams about here. Takes care of that one. And then finally we have 2 kilograms and 79 grams, so that would be 2,000 grams plus 79 grams, or something just outside of 2,000 grams, so that's 2,079 grams would be right about there. And that would be roughly where those numbers would fall in our number line, and it means that we've taken care of all five of those numbers. Well, thanks again for watching. I'm glad you've been able to participate. Good luck with your homework.